Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. It's your old buddy T-Dog. We've had a rough week this week. Uh, we uh, we began having, I began having chest pains Saturday sometime, I believe it was. And uh, I had to, had to take some nitro. It seemed like it might've calmed down a little bit, so we we didn't take any action on it. And then Sunday, it got worse. And really, the more intense, I guess you'd say, with the chest pain. And it ended up right here in the middle. So uh, finally, Sunday night, I told Mrs. T-Dog, I said, I don't believe I can handle it anymore. I had, uh, I took three nitro within 15 minute period, like it says to do. And it didn't affect it at all. So she went ahead and took me to uh, Sweetwater ER. They took me in immediately, which they always do with uh, with chest pain uh, uh, patients. And they checked me out, did all the tests. The EKG was good. Uh, they did a troponin test. Uh, it was fine. X-ray was fine. So they decided to keep me for observation. So I spent the night, Sunday night, and then Monday, uh, the doctor come in and uh, he checked me out and he said, we're gonna, we're gonna run some tests. They run some blood tests and, and uh, they did a CAT scan. All this time, they're bringing me morphine every four hours. That's how bad it was. Now, I'm not, I'm not telling you guys this for sympathy or pity or anything like that. All I'm doing is uh, just uh, letting y'all know what's been going on. Uh, I feel like I, I want to do that. So uh, first they come in, the nurse come in, she gave me a shot of morphine and I went down and got the CAT scan done. And just as soon as the CAT scan was done, and it was done with contrast, which I never have a problem with uh, uh, CAT scans, CT scans, and things of that nature with contrast. I've never had a problem with them. But evidently, the morphine on top of it, by the time I got back to my room, I was sick as a dog. And I don't have, I don't have a, a regurg. I can't regurgitate. I had surgery back in 2006 for an, a hiatal hernia that uh, where they tie your stomach to your esophagus. So I don't have a regurge. So I ended up dry heaving for about an hour or two. And she brought me some uh, nausea medicine and it didn't phase it. So then she went back, the nurse, she, then she went back and called the doctor and, and he told her to give me another kind of uh, nausea medicine and it worked for a little while. And they, they had brought me some food there, and it was, I think it was pasta with tomato sauce. And I was I said, no, thank you. I'm sorry. I can't handle that right now. So they brought me a sandwich, and uh, I pushed it back, too, because I just wasn't ready to eat. So I laid down, and I took me a nap, a couple hours, I guess, and I woke up feeling great. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to eat. I took a bite or two. And I got sick again. So uh, she come back in and gave me another shot of that stuff. Or actually, it was Zofran this next time. And I just I just went back to bed. And uh, I woke woke up the next day. And the doctor come in there and he said, uh, "Let's see, that was Monday, Tuesday. I come home." Wednesday, I think it was. Anyway, they did all the tests. He, he couldn't find anything. Well, come to find out, long story short, I have pleurisy in my left lung. And anybody that doesn't know what pleurisy is, it's basically a step up from pneumonia. It is an inflammation of the lining of your lung. And it it, it makes you really sore, a lot of pain. I'm still hurting. So uh, 
it's caused by uh, it, pneumonia or the flu or a virus. We're pretty sure I had the flu uh, previously. So uh, he sent me home with steroids and I'm on a steroid regimen now. And so far it is helping uh, the soreness. It's not quite as bad as it was, but it's still sore. Uh, I want to thank each and every one of you that knew I was in the hospital or that didn't know I was in the hospital that has been sending your prayers and your 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 uh, wonderful thoughts and texts and phone calls. I, I appreciate every one of you. We're, uh, we're on demand, and it's just going to take a day or two. Uh, Thursday, prior to that, I went to my lung doctor and we got some, uh, we got some news that we weren't expecting. Um, I already knew that I had gallstones, but I had had a CT scan done back in November and that was what was read Thursday. I have, and I knew that I had a spot on my kidney. Well, it turns out I've got kidney stones, and I got two spots on my kidney. They do believe the one is a cyst, and the other one probably is. We're hoping and praying. They're sending me to a nephrologist, which, from what I understand, is deal, deals with the kidneys and the gallbladder and things of that nature. They had me do a breathing test Thursday, which I wasn't expecting, but I found out that my lung doctor has ordered them every three to six months. So I did the breathing test and I failed miserably. The breathing test prior to uh, this one, I was at 38% lung function, which is pretty bad. This time I was at 19. And all this started from me wanting to be trying to get medically cleared. I've got two tears in my left shoulder. My labrum's tore and my rotator cuff's tore. Like I said, I am not looking for sympathy. I am not looking for pity. Not one single bit. My doctor the other day told me that because of my lung function, this is never going to happen. And as far as that goes, uh, no surgery is ever going to happen unless it's a life or death situation. Uh, also, she told me that uh, my oxygen is running 90, 91%. If it drops... 1%, I'll be on oxygen. So, uh, that's what we got going on. It's It's been a lot to swallow. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, OT Dogs, uh, he's had it rough this uh, last week or so. But we're still here. We're not kicking very high. We're still kicking. And as you can see, I'm out of breath right now. That's why I just have to take things a little bit at a time. Now today, I've, I've, uh, I've been able to get up and uh, Mrs. Mrs. T-Dog helped me get a shower. And I come in here, she put the heater in here because it's really cold in here in the shop. And I've been working on the uh, 61 Impala. And I have made some progress. So I'm gonna show this to you all. Uh, my my uh, iPad stand broke last time, so I've had to improvise. <laughs> I've made some kind of a, I don't, I don't know what you want to call it, but uh, it's working. I'm going to order me a good stand for my iPad with the ring light and everything. I've got the ring light, and I've actually got the iPad on the ring light right now, but it don't want to hold it. It just, it just fall over. So... <laughs> I'd have, you'd have to see it. I've got it wrapped in tape right now, holding it up. And hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. And you ain't got no money to, to buy it. Uh, you just, uh, 
you know, you just, uh, you just improvise, you know, <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, so I'm going to show you guys my, uh, uh, progress that I made today, and I'm probably just going to hold it up to the camera so you guys can see, and we're going to try to do that this way. Uh, please be patient with me while I work on these videos. I'm trying to make them as well, as good as I can with what I got to work with. So, uh, without further ado, we're going to start with the interior. As always, do not pay attention to my shaky hands. All right, so there you go. That's a pretty good shot. All right, so as you can see, we've got the dash painted. We've got the steering wheel in. The dash is in. And there, Kelly Coons is the white ball shifter. I love them, too. And it seemed appropriate. My buddy Floyd Marcy Jr. is the one that painted this interior, detailed it. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. I did the dash and put everything together. So that is just absolutely beautiful. I am very happy with that. So we're going to set that down there. I hope everybody got a good look at it. And here is the engine. Now, it has been wired. The wires are in place. I got to put the fan back on. That's no big deal. It's wired, as you can see, both sides. And the coal wire. The uh, air cleaner's on there. And like I said, I got to put the fan back on. As you can see, it's uh, Floyd made it where it's got poseable steering. So I like that. I did a little bit of trim work right here. I thought this was the fuel tank, I'll be honest with y'all. But I believe this is. So that's all right. No, no harm, no foul, right? So there's that. Done that today. Got the engine in, got it glued in. And the only thing I've done to the body, now the body, it's not... It's not a high gloss shine. Before I put the glass in it, I may go over it and uh, wax it. Give it a little bit better. But to be honest with you, it looks good, I think. I don't want to take a chance on putting more clear on it and messing it up like I did uh, old hair trigger. I still feel bad about that, but it happens, right? It happens, but I got the, uh, I got the radiator support in and that's all I've done to the body today. So it's not, uh, it's not bad, uh, progress. We, you know, we've had, we've had a setback or two, but, uh, it's not bad. And of course we can't forget little T-Dog. We can't forget him. As always, thank you, Russell. I love him. He's just nothing but cool. <laughs> totally awesome. And as I told you all last time, I made a little stand for him. That way he don't fall down. So he's, he's here with us. And, uh, I think that's about all of the progress I've made. It's been good progress. Let's see, I've got, I can show you this too. Here's the hood. Like I said, it's not a high, a high gloss shine, but it's something I can work with. You know, something I can work with. And then here's the, I do believe that's the rear splash pan. Got it all nice and cleared too. So I keep those over there so I don't mess them up. <laughs> but uh, this car is coming together nicely, I believe. Let me see if I can, see if I can mock it up real, real quick here for y'all. There we go. Gotta put that back on, it doesn't, fell off on me. 
Anyway, that's what we're looking at. Um, I'll fix that here in a minute. Won't take just a second. That's what we're looking at. Um, it's not bad. It needs uh, needs a little work, but it's not bad. Got to get the glass in it, like I said, and uh, I may go ahead and do that before I quit tonight. That way it can set. But uh, that's where we're at with it. I hope everyone uh, likes it. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe to my channel, uh, hit that uh, notification bell, share me with your friends, put a comment in the comment section down below, uh, whether you like it or whether you don't or whatever. Uh, I've had, uh, I think I've had one bad comment and I got over that pretty quick. Can't, uh, can't please everybody and ain't gonna try to. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, I'm happy with the progress. It's got a little ways to go, but it's not got a long way to go. We're going to be finished with this thing probably in the next setting, maybe. Uh, I've got to put the chrome, the, the gun sights on the uh, fenders. i got to put the, mirror, the door mirrors on, the door handles on, the rear splash pan and rear bumper. Put the front bumper back on. Put the tail lights in, the headlights in, and uh, I think that's it. So uh, maybe next time, hopefully, we'll uh, we'll have her done and uh, have something to really show you. I love the way this thing sets. Floyd had, I mean, he had this thing going on. All I'm doing is finishing it, y'all. This is not my build. I'm building it, but this is not my build. This is Floyd. Uh, my brother Floyd's uh, build, and uh, he did a fantastic job on it. I'm just finishing it. That's the way it is with these last couple, and that's fine because uh, I haven't been able to paint a whole lot, especially with my lungs the way they are. I do wear my respirator. I have a respirator, and it's a good respirator and that was bought for me uh, from my good friend uh, Kenneth who is uh, my buddy uh, Jim's boss. He watched a video of mine a ways back last year, and he saw me wearing one of those paper masks, and he had a fit. And he told Jim to go order me a respirator, and that's exactly what he done. So I'm thankful for that. I've had a lot of people helping me out, uh, sending me stuff and everything, and I want, you, I want every one of you to know I appreciate it. While I'm thinking about it, we are coming up on number 500 of our subscribers. When we get there, I'm going to do a giveaway. I'm going to give away a new kit. I think I might have an idea. I'm trying to make sure that it's not, and I'm not saying there's, you know, there's there's cheap kits and there's better high end kits, and I know that. I'm. It's not going to be just any old kit. It's going to be a nice kit because that's what I want to do. So I haven't really decided yet on what it's going to be. When we hit 500, I will let y'all know. And at that time, I'll tell you how you can enter into the drawing for the kit. So we're coming up pretty soon on it. The last time I looked, we were at 478. So, hey, thank you, y'all. Thank you, every one of you, man. That is so awesome. It's just like uh, Jess Goheen from over, over on uh, Scale Model Snail said, Oh, we're halfway there. Oh, living on a prayer. Bon Jovi. Can't beat it. So, uh, uh, and and she uh, she left me a real nice comment uh, toward that end, and I appreciate that. So, uh, I think that's going to do it for me today. I appreciate every one of you taking the time out of your day to watch old T-Dog put these model cars together with these old shaky hands and his, uh, his uh, 
breathing defect and all the other that uh, we deal with, but we're still doing it. Uh, today, uh, y'all should have seen me trying to put them spark plug wires in. That was a sight to behold right there. But by the help of the Lord, we got her done. So uh, I appreciate that. I'm thankful. I believe that's going to do it for me today. And I'll catch you next time on T-Dogs Model Cars.